Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, September 16th. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're still very busy in the Atlantic. We just had the landfall, finally, of Hurricane Sally early this morning as a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles per hour. This underwent a period of quick strengthening during the final hours as it approached uh, just east of uh, Mobile Bay when it finally came ashore near Gulf Shores, Alabama, and uh, brought winds over 100 miles an hour and storm surge and tremendous amounts of rainfall inland over the Gulf Coast region of Florida, Alabama, parts of Mississippi, and now spreading further north into deeper parts of Alabama and Georgia, where flooding remains a huge concern, and uh, the storm is still very much ongoing in this region. So we wish the best to everyone that was in the path of the storm, and hopefully uh, the recovery goes smoothly. But as Sally moves inland now, we are going to have other systems to track and we are far from done with the current period of hyperactivity in the Atlantic. There are several systems to watch. Uh, one is in the southwest Gulf of Mexico behind Sally, which I'll talk about in the latter part of this video. The other one is Hurricane Teddy. Uh, that may be a, a threat to Bermuda in the several days. We also have Vicky, which is a weak tropical storm that is not a threat to land. There's Hurricane Paulette scooting off and becoming non-tropical. And we have other tropical waves behind everything over Africa that may need watching as well. So still very busy, uh, but the big land threat here could be Hurricane Teddy and Bermuda, which just dealt with Hurricane Paulette here, may be dealing with another hurricane bearing down on the island here in about five days. If we look at the close-up view of Teddy, we can see as the sun sets here that the storm has a, a very nice core with strong bursts of convection. The eye is not cleared out here. You can see it's still milky white cloud filled, but we do have an eye wall evident here on the visible satellite imagery, and NHC estimates that this is a Cat 2 hurricane right now with winds of about 100 miles an hour. And there's not a whole lot uh, directly impeding its strengthening during the short term. If we look at the water vapor satellite picture, we will see a little bit of shear, just a little bit of southwest wind here as we have a, a weak upper level trough to the northwest. But at the moment, it's not influencing Teddy a lot. And as Teddy comes toward the northwest, uh, the only thing that's really going to be a detriment could be some of this dry air. If we look at the GFS uh, upper level wind forecast, uh, this is, uh, I can actually go back to the beginning here. You'll see that currently here's the little bit of an upper trough to its northwest. There's a bigger upper trough near Bermuda right now. And as we go forward, that's going to cut off and Teddy's going to interact with that trough. And uh, this is very similar looking actually to when Hurricane Paulette split the upper trough over the central Atlantic and caused a cutoff low to drift south and pivot the storm around to the left. Similar thing may happen to Teddy here, and you can see the similar thing with the cutoff low southwest of Teddy. But similar to Paulette, uh, we may also have some dry air that may get entrained into the storm while it interacts with this upper low. It's hard to predict exactly how much entrainment will occur, but that's a possible limitation on Teddy going forward. What may be a bigger limitation on Teddy as it gets closer to Bermuda in a few days is the cooler water left behind by Hurricane Paulette. This is the island of Bermuda right here, and you can see just a little bit of a, a lighter orange here. Instead of the dark reds and dark oranges, we have a little bit of a cooler water pool sitting where Paulette uh, stirred up some cooler water. And we can see Teddy coming up here on the model, creating its own cold wake. But as long as it keeps moving, it's not a detriment to itself. But if it moves over this cooler patch from Paulette, a lot of the deep oceanic heat content has already been spent near the island of Bermuda. So if we follow Teddy on the model, we could see it uh, move close to this cold pool. And you can see how immediately cold it gets. Even if the storm doesn't move over, you can see it moves nearby and the water near Bermuda immediately gets cold again because it hasn't had a time, had a chance to recharge after Paulette left the region. And this is going to be the key thing to watch is if Teddy can be limited as it approaches the island. The bad news is that if it's moving, you know, fairly quickly and it doesn't uh, do something like Sally just did near the U.S. Gulf Coast, uh, then it will likely not have time to weaken appreciably if it's already a major hurricane on approach to the island. Uh, if we look at the steering pattern uh, for whether this does get close to Bermuda, this is the GFS 500 millibar pattern a forecast for three days from now, Saturday morning, and we can see the ridge to the northeast 
of uh, Teddy directing the storm generally northwestward toward Bermuda, which is right here on the plot. And on the GFS, we see a slow turn toward the west here. Again, it's pivoting around an upper level low that you can't see here to the south side. So that's helping to pivot Teddy around. And then eventually uh, it has to turn north at some point. There's not currently a big trough coming to get it. So it moves a little slowly for a while. And that's where the upwelling could become much more of an issue here. And then it ends up moving west of Bermuda into the westerly jet stream. And so it narrowly misses a direct hit on the island. Although this particular forecast would likely bring direct impacts there. However, there's a lot of model disagreement uh, about beginning even on Saturday here. You can see uh, on the GFS uh, during Sunday, when this is still south of Bermuda, we have a trough pass through New England on its way eastward. And this is what uh, ends up moving on quickly on the GFS into the North Atlantic and allowing this ridge to build and kind of keep this down here for a little while before finally turning northeastward. This is very different behaving on the European model, which if we go back to the weekend now, we see a Teddy again here to the southeast of Bermuda. And as this trough comes down into New England, we'll see it here on Sunday. On the Euro, this is much stronger than the GFS. And actually, instead of scooting eastward across the Atlantic and leaving Teddy stranded to move a little more slowly near Bermuda, this actually digs down off of the mid-Atlantic and gives the storm a kick northward, which serves to move it much more quickly to the north and also much closer to the island of Bermuda than it does on the GFS. So you can compare that on, uh, you know, day five here on the Euro and we compare day five on the GFS, you can see the strong difference in the pattern here. Very, very different. GFS slower, no trough here on the Euro faster and we have a trough to its west. This is complicated because when these cutoff lows are doing this kind of behavior and we have ridging building over the top, it's uh, very complicated to simulate and models are going to disagree on this. You can see even in a day five forecast how different this is. This could also matter beyond Bermuda because this kind of a pattern is wild enough that it could slingshot the storm north towards say southeastern Canada. And on this particular run of the Euro, it even gets up toward portions of New England in the United States. And you'll see a lot of this on social media where this, this storm or hurricane may be curving left toward the US. And I just wanna address it now that, you know, it is a possibility in a pattern similar to this if we actually have a cutoff low that digs in here. But it's important to point out that this is a, in general, highly improbable type of evolution. You have to get the timing of this interaction between a cutoff low and a hurricane just right. And this cutoff low has to be strong enough to actually pivot the hurricane all the way to the west here. You're not going to get a big building uh, high with easterly flow that forces this in. It's going to be the upper level lows. Uh, it's, it, the onus is going to be on this feature if it's going to slingshot. And it has to be very strong in order to do that. What I'm trying to say is that this kind of evolution is probably still at this point a low chance. Could it slingshot up into Canada? Perhaps more likely, but it's it's much more likely that something like this kind of comes north for a while and then immediately turns northeastward once again instead of coming all the way over to the left. And at this point, we're still over five days out from that kind of thing on some of these model runs. So we still have time to watch this, and there's certainly no cause for any alarm in New England at this point. If this wild solution starts to become more likely over the next few days, then we'll start talking about it. But right now, uh, the most likely track here is probably more toward the north and then northeast eventually. But again, Bermuda first here is the concern as whether this cutoff low is there will matter as to whether the storm actually passes over the island. And I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, when I get to the stuff that's going on in the Gulf. But for right now, uh, the NHC forecast track for the next five days does have this just moving generally northwestward and getting very close to the island of Bermuda at the end of the forecast period. This would be Monday morning on the current forecast. And again, the timing here could vary uh, and it could be there as early as Sunday if some of the faster forecasts come true. And uh, in general, expected to be a pretty strong hurricane. NHC has it peaking here, and they do have a little weakening here because of the expectation that there could be some cooler ocean water, but it could still be a powerful hurricane with winds over 100 miles per hour by the time it gets to this point. So definitely a potential threat to the island. 
If we switch back to the large view now, while Teddy is undergoing its journey toward the northwest, we're also going to be watching the Gulf of Mexico. There's a feature that has been here actually for quite some time. You, you might remember way back when Sally came from the Bahamas as a weak area of convection. We had this actually came from where Sally is now and drifted down while Sally was doing this. And uh, this feature is still sitting around here and is going to get stuck in a weak steering current pattern for the next potential week uh, and maybe something to watch as we go forward. This is the current zoom in picture and it's not very organized at the moment. Not a lot of deep convection. We got a little bit, um, but there is some circulation here. West wind coming off of Mexico and uh, some north wind coming into it from behind Sally, but not a very organized feature at the immediate moment. Uh, the steering for this is going to be quite slow as it's kind of stuck down here in the southwest Gulf of Mexico, south of the jet stream that is over the southern U.S. We do have a trough over Texas that is going to come eastward behind Hurricane Sally, which is right here. And you'll see that by the time we get to Thursday evening and Friday, we have this very sharp upper trough digging in. And there actually is some model disagreement on what happens. We have 90L, which is the designation for this area of low pressure, sitting down here. And if this was a strong feature, it might actually get pulled northeastward toward the Gulf Coast by this trough. And actually on this particular GFS run, it does try to do that. You actually get a little low that forms and moves into Louisiana. But this is the only model run that actually does something like this and seems to be a bit of an outlier right now. All other models say that 90L is too shallow and will be left behind down here. And if we look at the GFS lower level flow at 850 millibars, by uh, Friday afternoon, uh, that upper trough is, is in here, but below that is this big cold front. And Sally has gotten strung out along this cold front and uh, this is, resulting in a lot of surface high pressure behind it over the central part of the country. And this kind of keeps our weak uh, feature here penned down in the southwestern Gulf. And most models agree that that's going to be the case. The other thing that this does is it sends a lot of cool, dry, stable air cascading down into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially wrapping up with this. And that could keep it limited for a while. And most models seem to think that this is going to take its time doing any kind of tropical development because of all that cool air coming from behind the cold front. The other thing about this though, again, is that it's gonna sit here for quite some time behind this cold front with high pressure to the north. If we look at the European model, here's Sally at the beginning of the run, here's 90L. As we go forward again, you'll see this old front come down and high pressure build to the north and 90L just kind of sits in the Western Gulf for a while. So we got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's still sitting there. Tuesday, you start to see it maybe starting to develop a little bit more on the model. And at this point, we're six days out. Not much point looking much farther forward than this. Uh, but this is the general tune of all model guidance right now is that this is just going to meander around to the east of Mexico for the next several days. And give it enough time, maybe that dry air mixes out, and maybe we have a storm develop. But at the moment, no clear signal as to uh, that happening very quickly or going anywhere very quickly. So once again, we have a stalling storm perhaps in the Gulf of Mexico over the next few days. Now, if we look at the 500 millibar pattern associated with this, uh, we can see that the, the trough to the west of Sally comes through here and uh, digs down. Part of it gets cut off. Part of it also gets sent out into the Western Atlantic where it joins forces with this trough and becomes the cutoff low to the west of Teddy. And this is again something that the Euro and GFS disagree on. So we still have some uncertainty in the evolution of this pattern. And then we see 90L left behind in the Western Gulf and very weak flow to its north. So once again, even a week from now, perhaps 90L hasn't gone very far from where it currently is. And the ensemble guidance, uh, this is the European ensemble, but any ensemble will do, UK Met Ensemble, GFS Ensemble. They all look like a bunch of spaghetti just milling around for the next seven days in this part of the Gulf of Mexico. Some models develop it, some don't. There seems to be a substantial chance that it will eventually get itself together. Uh, but at the moment, we're just gonna be keeping an eye on it. If it starts to drift too close to Mexico, uh, we'll start talking about it more for impacts. If it starts drifting up toward Texas, same idea. But right now, not an imminent threat to land, despite how close it is to land at the moment. 
So that's the overview for today. Lots of systems to watch. Uh, again, our thoughts are with those in the path of Sally, which is still impacting the southeastern U.S. Teddy may approach Bermuda after it dealt with Paulette. We may have another hurricane threat there and potentially beyond in southeastern Canada and an outside chance of the U.S., but too early to uh, be concerned about that yet. And uh, this 90L that we just talked about in the western Gulf may eventually develop, but at the moment not an immediate threat. And whatever else happens here, this is a uh, crazy, hyperactive hurricane season so far. Just make sure you have a plan in case one of these storms ends up coming to your region, because boy, do we have a lot of them running around the ocean right now. So do be safe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.